Hey, hi guys, too, and this is Neil. So in this video, this is going to be the end result of what we're going to work through right now. It's actually just a sketch type of painting for a watercolor um, that I'm working on. This is going to be part of my uh, my figures, uh, my surreal figure collection, and that's all going to be done in watercolor. I think I think it's all going to be done in watercolor. Anyway, so first thing I'm doing is just kind of um, getting a feel for the amount of heads, because I know that from the basically the crotch to the head, which is what we're doing because she's sitting down, well basically sitting down in, in a full lotus position, that from it's four heads tall. So I'm just like just quickly just kind of sketch out four heads so I make sure that the um, length is going to be correct. That's, that's one thing you want to get correct. If your proportions aren't correct, it doesn't matter how good you draw something, it's not going to look right. Right, so the, it doesn't matter how good the details are, the textures are, and all that kind of stuff. Something's gonna look wonky about your drawing because the proportions are out of whack. It's kind of like if you don't draw a car in perspective. It doesn't matter how awesome you make the handle look and the windows look and all the decals look, or whatever. It's gonna look weird. It's gonna look like it's distorted, right? So you gotta make sure you get the person, you know, get the perspective down, or the proportions down and perspective down. Right, so what I decided to do is is put the first eight minutes in real time. And the only ways I wanted to do that in this video is I wanted to show, and I should have actually been talking in real time while I was doing this, but instead you get a voiceover. <laughs> anyway, for those who don't, who know, don't know who this is, this is Neil, and I'm the uh, top art instructor at Udemy, a multi-billion dollar company, and also you can find me at masterpaintingout.com. All my courses right now are on sale there. And also, I'm the best-selling author of How to Draw Awesome Figures. Um, so yeah, I'm a professional artist and also a um, art instructor that uh, teaches in a down-to-earth way that's easy to understand. If you want to kind of get a feel for my teachings, check out any of my courses. And uh, when you go there on my website and go to the course that interests you, there's uh, at least you know four free lessons in each course that you can watch that we get a feel for what it feels like, um, how I teach. So um, the reason I want to do this part in real time is so you can kind of get a feel for how long it takes me to draw something from my imagination. So in my imagination, I had this idea in my head. I wanted uh, a female that was sitting in the lotus position and uh, in full meditation. And the name of this piece is called Born Again. Uh, I, you know, even though it's not done yet, it's like this is just the uh, digital sketch of it that I'll, I'll turn into a watercolor. But... Um, the idea that I wanted was, well, I don't know if I want to give it away. Um, I, I kind of want people to kind of figure out the meaning. But it does have a meaning. And the meaning isn't born again as in, you know, in Christianity. That, that should be obvious. Uh, but her arms are making the, the symbol of eternity, obviously, for a reason. So just in case that's not clear, that's what her arms are doing. Um, yeah, so at first I wasn't connect her arms as if she had four arms. And uh, which, which people would probably associate with uh, Hinduism or something, um, but instead I decided to disconnect the other arms. They they are grabbing onto her other hands. Uh, you'll see that here soon. And the reason why I don't really draw one side is because I I decided I'm gonna save time. And um, this comes from doing a lot of like professional work and having a deadline. You find ways to like save a lot of time. So I know that the left and the right. My computer was uh, automatically updating there, or this was automatically saving. I think it paused the recording there for a second. Anyway, um, I know that the uh, left and right are going to be identical, except for shading. And so I actually do a little too much shading before I end up uh, copying over, but it doesn't matter because the light was pretty much coming from above, so it's not a big deal. That's how I decided to do this one. But anyway, yeah, to save a lot of time, uh, I pretty much focus on the right-hand side, draw that out, and then copy and paste it on the other side. Now, you can do this with paper and pencil as well. Uh, tracing paper is an easy way to do it if you don't have a light board. And basically, you draw the right-hand side first, and then you trace over the tracing paper, and then you turn the tracing paper around, and you trace it again. It's kind of a long process. You trace it again really fast uh, to get the basic shapes down, and then you flip the paper back over again and put that side down so that it's you know, you're seeing the right side. And then just take your pencil and just, and just like... Uh, like almost like you're doing a uh, engrave, uh, not engrave. What's that called when you go to go to like the cemetery? Um, et, not, it's not etching. Damn, I forgot the name. I forgot what it's called right now. But it's where you go to the cemetery, you like you know, and you uh, scrub a chalk or put a piece of paper over the tomb to kind of get a, uh, an impression of it. 
kind of like that. So you just want to take your pencil and just like like scribble over all the lines really fast, and that will put a soft impression down of the of the pencil onto your piece of paper. And now you could then uh, draw over that. Um, so it, it, you do have to draw end up drawing it three times, but well, technically you're only tracing it um, twice, and then you're just pressing it down kind of hard, like just scribbling over it. So you're not really tracing. And then you have to draw it again, uh, you know, after that um, with solid lines for the third time. So it is kind of a longer process. The light board makes it much easier. The light board, all you have to do is um, you can literally just make a photocopy of the um, if you have a, a copy machine uh, or whatever. Most people do now and connect it to the printer. So you can uh, do it that way. Make make a make a copy of it and then take the copy and put it behind it. Um, and then flip it, you know, flip the flip the copy around, because that way, because with a light board, you'll be able to see right through all of it. Um, it just makes sure you have a good light board. Anyway, so that's one way to do it. But anyway, the, the other way, the cheaper way, if you don't have a light board and all that kind of stuff, uh, that's how I used to do it when I was younger. It does take a while, and it's kind of irritating. But if you, you really want it to match, then that's the way to do that. So now I'm I'm working out the uh, hips. Another reason I want to keep this part in real time is I really wanted to show how much time does it take to come up with the initial sketch honestly this part for me is usually the the quickest part coming up with the the initial the, the initial sketch is, is easy for me because uh, maybe because I've been doing a lot of comics and stuff I don't know um, but uh, yeah I don't know it just doesn't seem very hard I, I have it in my head what what the person should look like sometimes a pose takes a while to work out but um, I mean eight minutes to work out the main sketch not very long especially when the legs is is a pretty hard pose, um, but of course there's still there's still a lot of stuff left to be done. But the main idea is there already. But the legs here took a second, and I use a trick that I like a lot, and that is when you're not really sure how the legs should be drawn or the arms should be drawn, draw the hand or the foot where you want it at, and then connect the arm or hand or or the arm or leg to the foot. Simple, right? So connect the arm to the hand. Or connect the leg to the foot and that's what I did here so I knew I wanted the foot high up on her hips I decided this wasn't high enough so I, I ended up changing that but um, you'll see that in a little bit so I knew I wanted her foot up by her hips in full lotus and then it's a matter of just connecting the leg just make sure the leg is bent properly so that it can reach the foot and that's it and so I got you know just got to use a little logic to think about that and I teach all this you know in my courses on how to draw for imagination because being able to draw for imagination is it's one of the greatest feelings you'll ever get I think in my opinion I drew for years from references and after a while I just started getting bored of it um, you know it really did start getting boring having to look at things just to draw and I, I was always impressed by these comic artists I had this one comic artist friend that would fill his notepad up and, and I would watch him draw from his imagination I knew he was looking at nothing because I'm just sitting there his eyes are on the paper the whole time he never looks away so I know he's not looking at anything. There's no references. It's just his brain. And he's bringing these awesome characters to life. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. I want to be able to do that. And so that's when I set out to figure out how to draw from imagination. There was nothing out there. And so I had to just look at a bunch of books, a bunch of art stuff. And over time, after you know, studying so many different techniques of drawing and, and reading so many different books and watching uh, courses back then it was you know VHS and DVDs and stuff just watching so many courses uh, I started to understand and I started to break down I'm really good at breaking down something into how it works no, ma no matter what it is and I like doing that it's like to understand what's the fundamentals that makes this work and that's what I was able to do I was able to break down drawing and painting to the fundamentals of why it works you know not just not just the how but also why and understanding the how and the why I was then able to develop a system for myself to basically I developed a course for myself that I would you know do all the exercises and do all the practices and that would make me better at drawing from my imagination well then once I saw it worked for me I knew I knew it would work for others and that's when I started developing the courses that I originally developed for myself for other people that way they can also benefit from this awesome feeling of being able to draw from imagination and uh, there really just is nothing else that really tears art down into a science like um, like that so it's unfortunate um, but anyway so I, it took me the long the long way to do it it took me a long time to develop all that um, theories and ideas of how the 
how it is to draw from your imagination, you know, like to revert, basically reverse engineer it and, and, and develop a system based on that. And uh, anyway, so now you can do it a lot faster than I did because all the information is there in my courses. Um, you don't have to figure it out for yourself. You can just do the exercises and they work. I know they work because here's the result right now. You're seeing the results in action right now in front of your face. Um, and you already saw what, what the end, end result looks like. And actually, the sketch looks really cool. Um, I kind of I think the paint, um, the digital painting, kind of messed up the sketch in a way. Uh, but the watercolor shouldn't do that because uh, a lot of the sketch will be retained. Now comes I think one of the hardest parts. So a lot of people I think struggle at first with the. Um, I just copied her eye over to save time again, and then I'll change the lighting on it to make it different. But a lot of people find, I think, that first part the hardest, which I did in like eight minutes, and that was real time. I wanted, I just wanted to show in real time how long I actually Not now we're now we're in sped up mode, but um, they find the designing part the hardest part, and the reason why they find it to be the hardest part is because they haven't learned the basic forms of the figure and how to draw the figure from imagination. Once you learn that, and you, and the more you practice it, the better you get at it. The faster you'll get. You'll get to the point where you can do what I just did in eight minutes. You know, pretty much any 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 type of pose you can think of in your imagination, you can bring it to life, and bring that character to life, and um, without a whole lot of thought. What does take thought, though, always, is when you're starting to think about the three dimensions. And actually, here, I didn't realize I forgot to turn. I'm, I'm debating whether or not I should leave this like this or not. So, um, anyway, on my screen right now, I just see my hand drawing the thing um, up close, and I might leave it like that because when it's on, when it's not on color, it actually represents the colors pretty accurately, and it's kind of neat seeing the hand drawing. It's almost like my hand's drawing on a piece of paper. But that's another reason I like to show it now that um, my hand is doing what it's doing up the right hand corner, is that way you can see that it's just like drawing, you know. It's actually harder. I think pencil is much easier to draw with. I can draw with pencil much faster, especially when it comes to shading. But anyway, so this is the hardest part for me. And I think it's the hardest part for most artists when you're drawing from imagination is figuring out the light source. Because you got there's so much to think about. There's so many variables, especially if you have more than one light source. You have to think about how light reflects, how it refracts, how it, how translucent is the skin, you know, how much is the light penetrating? How much is it reflecting? From what angle is the light hitting it at? You know, and I found that the easiest way to do it is think about first, the first light first. And here, here, here's where I have the hand holding. I realize the fingers are way too small. And so I make them bigger in just a second. Um, but basically you have to think about first the one light source first and then light your subject with that one light source. And then after that, then think about your secondary light source and what area it's, it's hitting. And usually the secondary light source is going to put some light into the shadow area of your figure. And so it's just kind of like lighting up the shadow. So now you just go and erase into the shadow. That's what kind of what I do here. I like, you know, I shaded the breast as if there was just one light source. And then I added the secondary light source and erased part of that shadow area to, to make it look right. But yeah, so anyway... It, it takes a lot of thinking. It takes, takes a lot of, um, you know, if it's a, and especially when it's a light source you haven't used very often. And this is a light source to me that I don't use that often. Uh, my my go-to light source is like more of like a single light source. So as I was saying, my, my go-to light source is usually a single light source uh, that's to the right of the subject, above the subject, and then toward us, the viewer, the camera. And that's uh, pretty standard and uh, allows for darker shading and uh, shadows and kind of very like a dramatic look to it. But in this one, I decided to have the main light source kind of be more almost directly above the character, a little bit to the, a little bit to the right, but more directly above and um, toward us just a little bit. So it was a little bit different of a light source, makes it a little more challenging. And uh, I just thought it would fit and suit the pose better. So um, you gotta, we gotta think about your light source and, and what's the purpose of it, what is it doing? At this point, this is the kind of hairstyle I kind of went with. Um, I'm not sure if it's the ultimate hairstyle I'm going to go with. Matter of fact, I might not even give her hair because this is my, you know, the only surrealism, surrealism so far is the fact that she has these arms that are that are not connected to her and like holding her hand. So I might actually add more surrealism to it by um, changing her head to be some, her, her not her head, but her hair to be something else other than hair. I might have it be a bunch of um, figures 
like a bunch of um, almost like a a tree branch. Now this is like this alien writing that I just came up with on the spot real fast to have it floating around her. I wasn't I wasn't also gonna do it in the figure and the you know the basically the attorney symbol around her and I decided nah it's just that's too much. It's <coughs> excuse me, I probably should edit that out edit that out, but I'm probably not going to. <laughs> I probably should though. But hey it's just this isn't a professional work, you know. It's just a free YouTube video. But still, I probably should have edited it out. But anyway, um, I just figured that was just giving too much of it away, you know. I kind of want people to think about why her arms that way, and um, yeah, I kind of want people to figure it out for the for their own. And I'm trying not to give away what what what, what the painting is about. But everyone, ha every every one of these um, paintings I'm doing for the for the collection uh, has a meaning. And unfortunately, here my phone, when it came to the coloring part, really picked this, you know, made all the colors really bright. And so now I know if I want to record with my tablet with my phone, that I need to make sure I put it in pro mode and turn down the uh, the lighting, so that way it won't. That way it'll get more true to color of what you're seeing on the actual screen there. But anyway, so you can still see my hand movement at least, and so you can see that you know I'm I'm doing the work right. I'm it's like drawing, and that's that's what the only thing I wanted to show is that digital drawing and painting is like like we like real painting and drawing. In fact, painting is much harder uh, with digital. It depends, I guess. Um, really depends on the person. Uh, all I know is real painting to me is easier and it's way faster. Uh, digital painting to to like really refine it. Like this isn't refined. This is like a, just a quick sketch thing. So like coloring for like comic books or just doing like a quick type of painting is is easier um, digitally. But to do like a final painting especially if it's in watercolor I find watercolor to be the one of the most fast to do because you can be more abstract with it and you don't have to add so much detail I mean, you can get really detailed with watercolor as well so you can you can push the rendering really far and long but anyway so um, what's gonna be really hard uh, that's pretty easy to do digitally here is what I'm doing right now so to draw like this space or to paint this space scene wasn't very difficult digitally because you can kind of use some cheats um, in this case using some cloud kind of like textures and then just painting right on top of the cloud textures in order to get these kind of like nebulous look to it and then erase certain parts of it and then just kind of like paint it different colors and so with watercolor this will be a lot harder too because watercolor kind of like you know bleeds and stuff so it's you know you can control it but I kind of like the the chaoticness of, of watercolors but that's fine it, it doesn't have to look exactly the same anyway but the just getting a, these kind of vibrant colors in this kind of night sky with, with watercolor without spending a lot of time is going to be more difficult than I think digitally. Digitally, it's like really easy to get things that just look like lights and brightness because you can use like the add glow brush and, and there's other, you know, scattering brushes and things like that to save a lot of time. Um, you know, do stars by hand. You can you can flick your, your brush and stuff, like take a fan brush and flick it and get a bunch of stars everywhere. That, that 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 saves a lot of time but there are tricks you can do but yeah I think that this will be a challenge with the watercolor and so I might actually end you know, up doing something more abstract with for the watercolor anyways um, just kind of I definitely want more light behind her I, I realize if I do do a darker background then I'm definitely gonna have a lot of light behind her as if she's kind of like has a glow or aura around her or something um, I actually added a glow to her to kind of make it look like she can stand out more from the darker background but yeah, so this this part was pretty fun, um, you know, just thinking about the background, how it should look, and things like that. And I'm so I'm so not sure if this is the background I want to go with. So like I said, it's, it's a quick sketch, and it's just to, it's just to give me an idea of you know if it's something that I want to do or not. And uh, I, I kind of like the almost like the eye looking galaxy there in the background. That that looks kind of cool. But yeah, anyway, I might make her hair be something more like a bunch of figures coming out of her hair almost making a shape of like a tree kind of coming off of her head like branches coming off of her head and uh, that might look kind of wild but um, it really does add to the meaning um, a bunch of a bunch of uh, other female characters coming off of her like branching out off of her and uh, yeah so I'm trying not to give it away uh -huh. but anyway if, if you think you understand the meaning of, the, of it it's really not that hard to figure out I mean the uh, the title really is a big giveaway along with uh, what her arms are in the shape of in, in, in the uh, 
eternity or, or an infinite um, sign. But yeah, I decided to you know go to give her a third eye here. And I also decided to redo the eyes because I had um, kind of lost the structure or shape of the eyes when I added so much of that glow brush to make her eyes glow. But yeah, so that's anyway, it's pretty much done now. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this uh, commentary and um, if this has been inspiration to you at all, I just want to show you that, you know, you can draw from imagination and uh, it's an awesome feeling. Great, great thing to bring your imagination to life. And if you felt this helpful, please go ahead and share it to other people. They may also find it helpful and uh, go ahead and like and subscribe and all the good stuff. Thanks for watching.